Hey everybody, my name is Josh RV Nerd. This is a Wildwood 42 FK Grand Lodge, the fancy pants upscale park model destination series of travel trailers from the Wildwood Group here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This comes in about 12,990 pounds. It's a wide body, extra tall, quad slide, lot of camper. Thing is, I don't know that the weight on this one matters a whole awful lot because I think for the most part, this is something that you might have us deliver to a destination for you, set and level, probably just about one time, and there it's gonna be. These are ideal for like seasonal park type camping, and they can save you a chunk compared to an equivalent size fifth wheel, because if you take the all the cost of a fifth wheel, you take out the like cost of the auto leveling system and the fancy suspension and some other things that you don't need, like a gooseneck chassis, you can save a mint get more space, more comfort here than a lot of fifth wheels can hope to offer. Now, as we go through, I'm gonna show you where this thing really shines, even a couple areas where maybe it falls a little short so you can make a really educated decision. And I tell you what, the sweet double loft on this thing, if you wanna have old Uncle Josh over for the weekend, I could be a kid and camp out in that thing. That is awesome. <laughs> Now, when you go from a traditional Wildwood travel trailer to a Wildwood Lodge, this one's little brother, you don't really see a whole lot of equipment difference. Like, it doesn't feel much different. It just feels bigger, which is nice. Don't get me wrong. It is nice to have that 8 foot wide by 8 foot height. But when you come into a Grand Lodge like this, you immediately go, oh, yeah, oh, okay. We are, we're in another level here. We're 8 and a half foot wide, 8 and a half foot tall. Standard dual air conditioners and fiberglass skin. Things that, you know, you associate with fifth wheels, you're going to find here. And the idea, though, is that it's all on one flat deck. Like, if, if, if you just don't want to take the extra stairs up and down on a fifth wheel all day, this is an amazing way to go right here. Those taller ceilings offer big slides, big windows. They actually, it's so tall, they kind of have a hard time finding a window supplier to get windows this large there's there's just not every supplier will just crank these out of course i'm running into the slide wall behind me here also one of the things that i love about this thing is that over here on the camp side of the rv and i'll probably talk about this later you've got like even that little window up there opens for airflow but just all kinds of amazing panoramic viewing windows now it is a little uh it's early in the day and it is cloudy but these are also tinted windows so uh, compared to a traditional Wildwood travel trailer with non-tinted windows, you know, it's something that can help keep the heat down in here. And that's really one of the major things. In a destination trailer, you're setting up shop here for a long time, so chances are you want the windows, you want all this visibility. In a towable RV, you never know who you're going to be parked next to. Maybe you don't want to, and that's a cool thing. Maybe for one season you got a neighbor that you don't really enjoy over here. You can close those windows, keep those shades drawn, or vice versa. You could always have one side or the other open. And where that's really handy is like if you have a north-south facing uh, uh, campsite, in the morning you're going to get sun from one direction. In the afternoon, get sun from the other. So it really lets you choose where you're going here. Uh, now your seating here will also be drastically upgraded compared to either a Wildwood or a Lodge. These are dual high-to-bed sleeper sofas on the side with a uh, direct entertainment center facing theater seat. And really, guys, if you start looking at this, this reads a lot. Like something almost like a Sierra Sandpiper fifth wheel, also from Forest River. That's not a brand that we have here at Halo RV, but if you look at it, they're, they're not a bad brand, by the way. I don't I don't like to bash products. They, have, they do some cool things, I'll admit, absolutely. Um, but if you really look, this is giving you a lot of those features without a lot of that budget. Like I love the, uh, the first time I really saw the tabletops like this was in the Jayco Eagle and suddenly they're all over the place and I love it. It, it, it has a lot of cool character. Here's another thing I like, like I'm kind of klutzy. I'm probably gonna drop a bowl or something at one point and ding the table. It kind of just meshes here with that kind of, uh, you know, almost simulated reclaim barnwood style whatever you want to call it. now i'm not a home and garden tv guy i don't know the exact words for these things so correct me if i'm wrong on that another thing that's nice here is all of the accent lighting above all of the slide outs it cascades light against that bright ceiling and really opens it up in here uh plus there's that skylight up here above the uh, kitchen area and those light fixtures those are just cool and uh what's kind of cool is these are built in a different facility from the rest of the wildwoods these are made 
by a purpose-built team. All they build all day long are Wildwood Lodge and Grand Lodges. They don't make, uh, you know, little trailers sometimes and big trailers the rest. They're specialists, and I've always felt that, like, you know, it, like Black & Decker, generally, they're, they're known for tools. Now, they, occasionally their name is on, like, a coffee maker, but they don't really make that. They're tool specialists, and if you want good tools, you get a, a tool specialist. Now, I'm also not a tool guy, so if there's a better brand of tools of which I'm unaware, insert that name, and there you go. And they really take advantage of the taller ceiling on this to kind of maximize the kitchen storage. Not only is everything nice and big and tall, and maybe need a two-stepper, but a lot of RVs, you need that. Uh, you can see they're using like, you know, uh, framed out uh, hardwood cabinet doors. They've got the shelves inside those cabinets, but sunken back a little bit so you can have doubled up storage, but also room for tall stuff. You've got hidden hinges in here, that extra large microwave. Again, very residential sized appliance over here. That is not convection. I just want to point that out real quick. It is large enough if you really felt like swapping it out for a convection, you very easily could. Then on the way back here, uh, something I want to address. We have been very vocal in the past. We are not always fans of residential refrigerators, so I want to go ahead and address the elephant in the room, the big shiny silver whirlpool elephant. Our dislike of residential fridges typically uh, stems from towable RV instances. This is something that is going to be parked more. You're probably going to be in it more. It makes This fridge makes more sense because it's giving you more storage at less money. Now, there's still benefits to a two-way fridge, but I do think that this is a good application for a residential fridge in an RV because it's not going to be bounced down the road with any kind of frequency. Not really any different than the uh, the factory delivery truck getting uh, you know a household fridge to your store or something like that, or your store, your house. I'm thinking store because I'm at the store. I love that corner pantry. And you might be wondering, why is that angled funny? Remember, this is the front angled wall of the camper up here, but it, it opens right up. There, I'm not really sure that you're shy on storage. There is one spot in here that's a little awkward to get to. I hope you appreciate the candor. I will always tell you where I think RVs are great. And I'll tell you sometimes where I think, eh, you know, maybe this could be a little bit better, but I don't really know how you do it better. It is rather deep back there. You might have to send one of the grandkids back to get stuff, but I don't know. I don't think it's that big a deal. Um, the uh, window coverage here, that is like one of the only windows up front there that just doesn't open for airflow. Everything else will, including the uh, window over the top of the stove here. And that is a countertop to cabinet bottom backsplash. And since the stove is not right next to anything, there's no, like a lot of uh, RVs seem to not include a side splash, but you don't have to have that here. The other thing I like is uh, if you stand right in front of this, it just has I mean, it's got a gorgeous eye appeal to it, you know? Everything is just very symmetrical. Everything looks and feels very nice, like it just wraps right around you. The countertops here, by the way, are a sealed edge thermal foil, just like you'd find in all Wildwoods. And that is uh, like a stovetop, definitely not from a normal travel trailer. Like you see that in like Montana, North Point, Pinnacle, Luxury, Fifth Wheels here at Halo RV. It's a sealed burner stove, so you don't have to disassemble half the thing to clean it. Have you noticed, too, the easy reach outlets in here? There's uh, outlets to the right of the window that we just passed. There's outlets just to the left. And then over here, kind of by the sink area. I mean, there's outlets everywhere. And that is GFI protected, by the way. These all are. So if you don't know what that means, if you accidentally splash water on it, it'll just trip a breaker. It won't uh, electrocute you, you know. Uh, <laughs> good. Uh, you know, the kitchen drawer space is minimal. But it's not insufficient. I think there's enough. It's just not over the top. Whether this one really, where you win here is uh, just all of the cabinet capacity. And that accent light below the counter, I think is really, really sharp because like, if you need to try to navigate at night a little bit, or let's say that you've got some little, some grandkids, or some people who are just unfamiliar with your RV staying over in those twin hide beds that we'll see open in just a second, even though the light is up here, it will put enough light into the room to help them kind of navigate, just have their bearings when they wake up in an unfamiliar spot. The accent lights over the slides also act as some pretty solid night lights too because it's never direct bright light in your face. I haven't talked about it, but again, just like a big fifth wheel, you've got that larger uh, oven as compared to a smaller like camper oven. You know, this is something a little bit bigger. People who actually cook in their camper, you're going to like this thing. If you really look at it, this is just a uh, front kitchen fifth wheel floor plan where they took the extra steps out of it. And I like whenever I have a place to put a wastebasket uh, in the kitchen. That's, to me, that's 
a very often missed and overlooked feature. Now moving forward back to that central, I guess technically we're moving backward back to the uh, central living space. Look at the windows on this. And again, the, the light, the cross breeze, we got the sunshine threatening to come out. A little Age of Aquarius let the sunshine action going on. I'm, I'm all for it. The, uh, if, if you were sitting on the theater seat, this is basically what you'd look at right here, directly across from the big old jumbotron and boardwalk and park place, with the electric space heater keeping your toes warm down below there. Now, um, again, we've got twin hide beds here, so if we take a look, we open those up. What is nice is because the RV is so wide, there's always space to slide between them. So even if you have guests all over the place, and that's what's cool about this one, this is an amazing alternative to a bunkhouse for a family uh, that spends a lot of time at a destination because you can sleep, let's see, four in the loft, two in the bedroom, two to four more down here. You're sleeping six to 10 in this thing, no sweat. Now to do 10, a couple of them will have to be kiddos on the smaller mini loft up there, but it can be done. And I mean, it can be done for real, not just like theoretically. Now I've talked about easy reach outlets. They do make sure they put a couple in some certain places. So if you do need to get like a vacuum or you want to put a standing fan somewhere, you could. Although you have that residential ceiling fan way up here. I actually am I'm trying not to swing the camera around too much, but there's a lot of square footage to cover here. Then as we uh, go through the hallway, you can see again more giant windows. I love those vertical blinds. I'm always a sucker. And speaking of compared to uh, uh, a lot of things that just have pleated shades, you have the roll down blackout night shades here, and you notice how they don't go when they uh, retract, which <coughs> hurts your throat to say. <laughs> and this bathroom absolutely exceeded my expectations. It's got some very sharp kind of modern accents. I like that light beam at the top right there. It's not one single bulb stabbing you in the eyes. The mirror is kind of really recessed back and it gives you a lot of wide open space here. And folks, counter space in a bathroom is something a lot of RVs are not well known for. Look at this. That is a, a sealed edge counter, just like the kitchen, a big recessed sink and just tons of room, whether you need to you know, hook up shavers, blow dryers. Again, these are GFI protected and bam, there's another set right over here. You're not gonna you know, zippity zap yourself. But down below here, the visual appeal that this gave me, I was not expecting in this RV. That little slatted bottom space right there, that is that is beautiful. Now this looks like two drawers. I do want to be fair. This is kind of like, almost like a sponge drawer. This will be a good spot maybe for some toothbrushes or something like that. But because the sink's there, they couldn't do a drawer drawer. But since the sink is offset, they could do a drawer drawer there. And that is beautiful big folks that is really big now one of the things i was really curious about with these loft models can i stand in this shower i'm 6'3 i'm a big dude so i put it to the test and you know what i found i fit in here just fine because it's got about a six and a half foot clearance here under that uh double mega loft and that's enough i think that's going to be enough for most people now you might be one of those really tall six foot seven, seven foot people. I get it that that's, you know, this might not fit for everybody, but that's why I'm taking the time to show you these things. I like to show you where RVs are awesome. I like to show you where maybe they may potentially not be the right one for you because the last thing I want is for you to visit my family owned and operated facility here and be unhappy with your purchase. Now, similarly, leg room, woo, leg room for days. Now, let's also proactively address something. A lot of people aren't gonna like that vent right there. If I'm being honest, I don't know that I like that vent right there, but you know what? It does serve a purpose. There's a reason it's there. It's the most logical position for him to put the heat duct. I kind of, I would like to know if they could like move it back here into that corner, but no matter what, it's going to be a little bit tricky. Here's the thing though. I think what a lot of people are going to do is they're just going to slap a bath mat down on top of that and just never worry about it. After that, it's probably just going to be a complete non-issue. One of the other pleasant surprises I found on this model is the fact that instead of just like a ladder to that loft, it's a legit staircase. This is like a two-story camper, 
if you will. I mean, I, I think it probably technically qualifies for that description. On the way up, though, I do want to point out the central vacuum system. It's equipped here into the stairs. And you've also got that electric dustpan toe kick on the right side. You can just flick that with your toe, activate the uh, collection point, and you don't have to lug out all the like pool cleaner hoses and stuff. I like that very nice handle getting you up and down there. So good for little kids and also good for like adults like me who I've kind of got a knee with a little hitch in my giddy up. Let's take a peek up there. We're going to start on the right hand side. And what's cool here is as you come up, there's a light switch for each loft. What I like about that is it puts the light above the bed space, but it also puts it at a spot where the, uh, say, mom and dad or grandpa and grandma, whoever is running the house, if you will, they can be like, okay, bedtime, lights out. Now, this gives you, what I love the slats, the, or the posts or whatever you want to call it, because it, it makes us look and feel big. You never feel really closed in, but... You see those curtains. There's actually a curtain on the right, curtain on the left. They are on tracks where if you want to completely privatize that, you can. And that's what's neat about this. Like, you look at it right now and some people go, why do I need a loft? Why do I need... I don't need these bunks or whatever you want to call them, man. Okay. Would you like an attic for storage? Because if we're being frank, destination, park model, trailers, whatever you want to call them like this, they are not known for having amazing storage capacity outside. So maybe being able to have some totes or something stuffed away up here could work for you. And it's right by the main entry door. Notice the household and USB outlets there. Now, if we turn our way around here, I'll try to go slow to not make you motion sick because I know I'm sensitive to that. This is the big kid stuff. This is where adults can sleep if need be. So let's say you're like my parents, you know, and they have me and my wife and my kid. And they want to have their adult children and grandchildren over for a weekend. We could crash up here, no sweat, and frankly, I think my wife would like to be have that little divider between us sometimes. <clears throat> she She's the best, but I smother her. I, mean, yeah, I, I do. <laughs> anyway, um, if you notice, these are wide. These aren't just like standard bunks. These are wide. Now, they, they're not as long as a traditional bed. It is a little bit tricky to try to get big bedding up here because you do have to wrap around that, uh, that staircase you know, to get up here. So the flexible kind of mattresses like this make a lot of sense. But again, this just could be storage. You could make this like a little entertainment loft, a little gamer space. There's a lot of different things this could do. Uh, you can see some, again, household outlets. You'll find them all over the place in here, including this central divider stand. You see household and USB outlets there. You see that shelf above for like your little phones and knickknacks and things. And then I'm going to climb up on the bed and give you a twist around so you can see the entertainment wall over here. And not only are there TV hookups, you see there's also a little kick of like closet space right there. Now you are directly under the second standard 15,000 BTU Coleman Quiet Air here. Um, that will, if you want to, you can actually open some slats and just drop the cold air in right here. But otherwise it'll actually filter through all the central ducting. Now one thing I want to mention... Um, Next to this little sealed countertop here, I, I pointed out how you have household and uh, USB outlets. You do have those on both sides of this stand. So the other bed over there gets the exact same treatment. Nobody feels like they got left out. Now, as we come downstairs, this is interesting. It actually has a drop frame in the back. A lot of fifth wheels have a drop frame up front. Some very rare things like a couple Montanas are double drop frame. You actually have two steps down into the master bedroom here. And we're gonna see a couple optional things. The first of which is this king bed upgrade that we've applied right here. What I like about it is you can, because they kind of expect you to do the king bed on this one, they leave room to walk around it. And look at that handy CPAP stand over here. Now, it is it is only a stand on one side. But if you're curious, if you need to know how to put a CPAP on the other as well, for $20, I have something that you can get off Amazon delivered to your house in two days to turn any bed into a CPAP-friendly bed. So that is not a hard thing to accomplish. Now, there's just as much headroom in here as there is uh, in the bathroom area. Actually, it's slightly larger because you do take the steps down. So, you know, you've got good headroom clearance in here. You have the same blackout nightshades in this. Uh, the bed, uh, actually, let me uh, take a look over X-ray vision, go! We've got 
<laughs> full storage below the bed down here, which is always a crowd pleaser feature. Now, just like the living room, this thing is just slathered with windows. So depending on your site, like I'll hear people say, man, I've got a site where when I wake up, I'm looking at the lake or something like that. It's really cool. Or let's just say the kids are outside playing and you're in here just taking a midday siesta and you hear whack, wah! Well, <laughs> you can peek straight out the campsite of your RV under that awning under the picnic side where you're probably hearing that noise and you can get a good bead on what's going on. Right now we're looking at a dump truck doing, I don't really know what, driving the opposite way on traffic. What are you even doing? Oh, I can't look at that. That's going to give me anxiety. Anyway, <clears throat> down here, huge dresser. We open that up, take a look. You can see five big drawers, three of which are like double size. So if you really, you know, you got sweaters, jeans, things like if you want a spring and fall camp, you want to be able to pack in here, you can do that too. Jumping over the other side of the bed, I wanted to start back at the dresser just to give you a point of reference. Now, naturally, you do have a hard closing door there for the bedroom. Then you see this big guy in a closet right next to it. We'll get to that in just a second. If I uh, weave my way back out of this corner, I just put myself in. If there's one other little, and I mean nitpicky thing, I would like to see changed on this. The bedroom light switch is back here behind the door. It's not, it, it's not that it's hard to use or anything, but... I would, I don't know, maybe here so that it's right in or out on the way through. That's just a little thing. Now, as long as we're standing here, something to show you. Where this wallboard and this wallboard meet, they have not a piece of seam tape, but actual printed trim. It's a T-mold that click locks into place. What I like about that is it's not going to peel if it gets hot and cold in here because you're probably not constantly climate controlling an RV the way you would your house. So things like heat and humidity have a greater effect than you would expect because you're thinking, oh, my, it doesn't have that problem in my house. Yeah, but you use your house differently. That Even when you're gone, you leave your, your air or your furnace running. Now over here, one of the other options we've added into this bedroom is the washer dryer prep. And I also want to explain why that door doesn't fully open. Standard, remember this model is a queen bed. Standard, it does not have that washer dryer prep. You see how this cabinet sticks out a little bit that is as a result of the washer dryer prep so we brought the cabinet forward a little bit with that we've brought the bed out a little bit with the king bed upgrade and if you install a washer dryer that door would come off so right now what it is is just a big virtual like walk-in closet you can see you've got a hanging rack in there you could use this as a combo or stackable setup but Obviously, the door, you have to decide what you're going to do with it. So just kind of proactively keep that in mind right there. But right beside it, you will always have that awesome dedicated closet space, even if you do or don't install a washer dryer. So you've got more hanging storage up here. Uh, you can see with the, uh, you know, the mirror doors, it makes the room look and feel a little bit larger. Then down below some dresser space. Now the RV is not level and that one door kept wanting to close. So I actually, I use my hat as a nice soft buffer pad to keep that door held open. Sometimes just about being a little creative, I guess. Now as compared to a more common towable RV, I mean, this is technically a towable RV, but it's going to be more a parking RV. You know, your travel access with the slides closed here is going to be far more limited than a lot of other things. That being said, considering this is the kind of unit that you just tend to use at one place in your own parking spot, not potentially in the, you know, Bob Evans parking lot, I don't personally think worrying too much about the travel access is that big of a consideration here. And that's good, because basically, <laughs> it has none. And uh, I, I hope you appreciate the fact that we're willing to even show you sometimes where an RV is less than stellar. We're always trying to be fair here at Halo RV so that we can help you find your second camper the first time. Now, I really wish you were able to see this thing in just direct sunlight because that stark white skin, it just gleams that high gloss fiberglass. Unfortunately, I'm kind of dodging raindrops right now. We've got some uh, clouds rolling in. I'm getting kind of misty eyed here and I don't mean sadness. <laughs> so. This is very cool. What I love about this thing, and you'll see it when we wrap around the other side, it's kind of got a uh, front back sort of thing going on. You got the double slides up front giving you all sorts of campsite windows. Plus, remember, you got that 
uh, sliding uh, patio door, really letting you enjoy the look of your campsite. All the windows are over here on the campsite. You can see that it is slide awning ready, but then you have a very private rear patio awning space. And normally, since you don't see an awning up front, you'd kind of feel like you really got kind of, you know, shorted an awning. But because the RV is so long, uh, you, you know, you've got a pretty good awning area back there. As I mentioned, inside, but it's a little obvious when we're out here, like, you can see sitting next to that Cougar fifth wheel. Again, this gives you the size and space of a fifth wheel, arguably more cubic foot, not, I actually, I think it is more cubic foot of interior space than something even like a Montana fifth wheel, because it is eight and a half wide, eight and a half tall, versus the Wildwood Lodge, which is eight by eight. This is eight and a half by eight and a half, so it is a little bit bigger. The, uh, uh, Grand Lodge series gives us that high gloss fiberglass skin standard. Uh, the Lodge standard would have an aluminum uh, corrugated skin. Now one of the options that we have applied to this one, because the trailer is very, very long, and uh, RVs like this are often used at campsites that could have length restrictions, so we have built this with a uh, detachable tongue up front. That is, now, keep in mind, that's optional. Sometimes, uh, if we're short on inventory, we'll take whatever Wildwood has available, but that is our preferred way to build them. And the idea there is that can save you a little space. Now, here's the catch-22 with that. I'll always tell you the good with the bad. <clears throat> Pardon me. You do have to find somewhere else to set the propane tank, so you could probably just set them under the front. Also, some park campground owners do not want you to de uh, detach the tongue. God forbid there's something terrible like a fire. It makes it difficult to try to pull your trailer, basically impossible. Um, also, some states, some counties may have a regulation where if you take the tongue off, it's no longer considered a mobile structure, but a permanent structure. And they might have to get taxed at the campgrounds for having additional permanent structures. So what I'm getting at, guys, is if you are interested in taking the tongue off, please, please, contact your local destination to make sure they're cool with it before you spend the money and sign the dotted line because then it becomes very very hard to unravel this thing now a couple things i didn't mention real quick though right up front there was a simple 12 volt battery disconnect so that when you are away you can make sure your batteries aren't getting drawn although this thing will spend most of its time plugged in um, and when we uh, got down there you might have noticed that uh, drop panel accessibility that is something that we uh, love on the Wildwood series. It is a heated enclosed belly and really offers a lot of protection and easier to service. If you need more information on that, give us a call. This is, I think, one of the best upgrades available on these things, though. It is kind of, it's a very, like, residential style, massive water heater. And you can't get this on the Lodge series. You can't get that on a fifth wheel. That's like a 20 gallon vessel water heater with a fast recharge. So if you wanna take some back to back to back to back to back showers and nobody has to take a cold one, that's the way to do it. Now don't get me wrong, I don't mind a cold one. I enjoy myself a cold Kurs light every now and then, but um, I, don't, I don't enjoy a cold shower. <laughs> Uh, one of the other differences that you might note here versus the traditional Wildwood series is the inclusion of tinted windows. Versus a, uh, a more portable, smaller Wildwood or X-Lite, this is just going to sit in one spot. You can't really shield it from the sun by parking it under a tree. So they make sure, especially with the number of windows and the square footage of windows on one of these things, that you're going to help uh, you know, keep the sunshine out of here. The uh, Back end of this is a little bit plain, but I think that's because they didn't want to stick anything more off the back of it since it is really already so long. Now back here, this is like the perfect place to put like a little uh, patio deck or something like that. And this is what I was saying where you still have a really generous power awning space over here, but it's kind of, it's behind the slide. So what you're gonna get is just this huge wide open patio picnic party area right there. Now, because this is very often used at a park or a destination or a seasonal or whatever you want to call it, you notice that they don't go with those kind of flip-up stable steps. Those aren't really compatible with a sliding patio door anyway. Instead, what they go with here are the steel steps that, maybe not fancy, but if you want to fold them out of the way and build your own four or five stepper, or if you want to build a deck onto it, you can. Because so many people do something like that, 
they don't add a whole lot of money to these steps. These steps are really just here to get you in and out of the camper when you're looking at it, because chances are once you reach your destination, you're not going to be using them. Now over here, outside TV hookups and speakers, I like how they're right down low so that they're, you know, you can hear them. You're not going to be blowing away the neighbors. That's something that I really enjoy about them. Now there's, uh, again, compared to a fifth wheel, no fancy suspension system, no fancy auto leveling system, because typically an RV like this, very often the buyer will just say, tell you what, I'll pay somebody a couple hundred bucks one time, bring it out to my site, set it, level it, put it on blocks, whatever they got to do, hook it up. Then I'm just going to show up and I'm just going to camp. A lot of people who look at a camper like this don't have a tow vehicle. And I think that's fine. Not everybody needs an F-350 or whatever giant pickup you prefer, you know. Uh, it, to, I will say to get this to a destination, I would certainly like you to have at least a three-quarter ton pickup, if not better. Not just because of the weight. It's certainly a heavy trailer, but guys, this is long. And if you think about it, if you're trying to move a rock, the easiest way to do it is to get a really long stick. And the longer the stick, the easier it is to move the rock. Well, the trailer is the stick and the vehicle's the rock. So the longer the trailer, the easier that vehicle will be to push around the road. That's why you need a good heavy duty truck with a stiff suspension to be able to handle this thing as it wants to move around behind you. But again, if you don't wanna deal with all that, you give us a call, we'll get you a delivery crow to your house, to your destination, to your campsite, to whatever. We'll get it parked, set, leveled for you. We can get it all wrapped up into one figure. If you need financing, it can roll right into that. So you just don't have to worry about anything extra out of pocket. Or you can cover it out of pocket, finance the rest, or just write a check or whatever. My point is, doesn't matter what you need. At Halo RV, we can do everything and we don't do hidden dealer fees. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo Camp at everyone.